I've talked about supercell thunderstorms on Morse code of weather before, but this week we'll go more in depth into some interesting evolution of supercells that can happen in certain environments. Now, supercells are the strongest thunderstorm type when you have an individual thunderstorm cell big cumulonimbus cloud that's stretching several thousand feet up into the atmosphere. It reaches a level where it can't go any higher and it spreads out. That's where you get the overshooting top and kind of the anvil appearance to the top of the cloud. But at the bottom of these supercell rotating thunderstorms, you can get the wall cloud and then a tornado to form and hail is rather prolific within these strong supercell thunderstorms because they're rotating. That's the characteristic that's defining of supercells is that it has a rotating updraft. So within the core of these big cumulonimbus clouds, the updraft, the rising air that's warm within the thunderstorm is rotating. That sustains the storm and allows for severe weather to happen. Now what causes that internal rotation within the thunderstorm? The primary cause is wind shear and that's the varying wind direction and speed with height. And that causes our updraft, the rising air within the thunderstorm cloud to be displaced or separated from the downdraft or the sinking rain cooled air in the thunderstorm cloud that allows for the thunderstorm to sustain itself and last a lot longer. So what can happen within these supercell thunderstorm clouds that's really interesting is for them to split. So this was an example from 2023, July of that year, where this thunderstorm in far western North Dakota split into two separate severe storms. One tracked all the way up to Lake Sakakawea, the other one went down towards the South Dakota border. Here's another example from May earlier this year. There was a supercell individual thunderstorm cell that developed on the North Dakota, South Dakota border. It turned severe and then each of those cells uh, went on to be severe as well. It split into these two separate cells, but the southern cell became the strongest and even showed signs of rotation a little bit closer to that moisture source of the Gulf of Mexico and was able to pull in more rotation. So again, uh, the supercell thunderstorms are rotating within them. And an analogy here is that the supercells get their spin initially by eating long spinning spaghetti noodles of warm, moist air. So think of it like having a highlighter or a pen in your hand and the wind aloft is rotating faster than the wind at the surface. So you can see the rotation that happens there producing that horizontal noodle of rotating air that, can, that then gets sucked into the thunderstorm cloud by that updraft, by that rising air. And as the, twist, uh, the twirling noodle of air gets drawn into the storm's updraft, the rotating air is then tilted from the horizontal to the vertical, and that's where we get the rotation within the storm. So let's see how the storms split then. And this is somewhat rare of an occurrence for them to happen. Well, you get the developing thunderstorm updraft that causes that spin to go from the horizontal to the vertical. Now we have the rotation in this direction, and they're spinning in opposite directions. There's two separate areas of rotation, one going counterclockwise, the other clockwise. So new updrafts are forming within that thunderstorm cloud with some really small regions of low pressure helping to suck the air up into the thunderstorm. And there's a developing downdraft because what goes up has to come down. So with that rain cooled air in the center of the storm, that separates the two updrafts and causes the storm to start to split. So the updraft of each storm that splits is different. It goes in a different direction. The right mover going to the right of the initial thunderstorm movement spins in a counterclockwise fashion. That's more normal for supercell thunderstorms, whereas the left mover goes in a clockwise rotation fashion within the thunderstorm cloud. That's a little bit abnormal. Usually what happens when a thunderstorm splits is that the right mover becomes the dominant storm and the left mover dies out because the right mover is ingesting all of that moisture and spin in the atmosphere for it to sustain itself. Here's a good example from Texas where both cells were actually quite strong after they split and you can see the internal rotation within those storms. They can both be severe. Uh, the rotation was uh, counterclockwise in one and clockwise in the other. So pretty an interesting and rare phenomenon that happens with supercell thunderstorms. They kind of clone themselves into two separate storms. It's most favored when the direction of wind shear is aligned with the motion that the storm is going in. It tends to occur roughly 30 to 60 minutes after the formation of the parent thunderstorm and it can occur repeatedly. And what we use to dissect these storms and figure out are they going to split is what's called a hodograph. 
It's a plot of that vertical wind shear in the atmosphere. And the straighter that that hodograph plot is, that indicates that we have a higher potential for splitting thunderstorms. Now the left split, the left mover, is more likely to produce very large hail, but rarely produces tornadoes. Whereas the right mover, the one that goes more easterly instead of to the north, typically, is more likely to produce tornadoes. There's usually more spin, and it can get stronger. That's also likely to, to contain hail. So with these supercell thunderstorms, when they contain large hail, we can use a radar signature called the three-body scatter spike. That can really indicate that there's large hail within these supercell thunderstorms, and it's kind of a radar artifact. The radar beam is going into these thunderstorm cells. It hits a lot of that hail aloft. It's scattered actually back down to the ground, back upwards towards the hail, and back towards the radar, generating this spike on our radar imagery that shows us that there's very large hail within that supercell thunderstorm. So some interesting information, especially about these splitting supercell thunderstorms. Back to you, Jody and Kevin. See him a lot like he just described, right? And it, it's amazing. Meteorologically, it's amazing what happens in the atmosphere and those scatter spikes and we'll talking my the, language. We'll take the rain, not the... Yeah, we just want the, the garden stuff. variety showers. Yes. That would be the Is best Is that thing, too much right? to ask for? No, yeah. we need it now, too, especially yes. with that low humidity exactly. out west.